Facebook has demonstrated they cannot act independently. Facebook over and over again has shown it chooses profit over safety. It is subsidizing, it is paying for its profits with our safety. I'm hoping that this will have had a big enough impact on the world that they get the fortitude and the motivation to actually go put those regulations into place. Remember her name. That was Frances Haugen, a product manager at Facebook, turned whistleblower, urging the federal government to regulate Facebook in light of repeated failures by the company to stem the tide of misinformation on its platforms and the harm it causes. Haugen will be testifying to Congress tomorrow in a hearing that is sure to spark a conversation about what, if anything, lawmakers are going to do about it. Are they willing to regulate social media? It's a task that's made harder by the fact that one of the nation's two political parties is seemingly addicted to disinformation and whose leading voices have accused social media companies of censoring conservative voices. Joining our conversation is Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwell. He serves on the House Intelligence, Judiciary and Homeland Security Committees. Claire's still with us. You know, Congressman, I thought of you when I read this because I thought years ago you could have put most of this on Vladimir Putin in 2016 for spreading the disinformation. Now we seem to do it all by ourselves. And I wonder if you have new questions and a new view on Facebook in light of this whistleblower testimony. Uh, yes, Nicole, it's like the Lincoln quote that essentially, you know, America will never be defeated by an enemy from abroad, uh, but we could only be defeated from within. Uh, and the fact that we continue to see hate speech and misinformation across social media platforms that are tearing families and tearing fellow citizens apart uh, shows that we're not doing enough. And I couldn't agree with the senator more that if we were to just go after solely Facebook, that is not going to solve the problem. We need something much larger. I, I would call it a digital uh, convention to rewrite and reexamine privacy, data security, algorithm laws to make sure that we can protect consumers and they can still be connected in this new uh, digital environment. I want to play something that this whistleblower um, said about the company's knowledge of the harm it does, in this case, to teen girls who use Instagram. One of the Facebook internal studies that you found talks about how Instagram harms teenage girls. Oh, yeah. One study says 13 and a half percent of teen girls say Instagram makes thoughts of suicide worse. 17 percent of teen girls say Instagram makes eating disorders worse. And what's super tragic is Facebook's own research says as these young women begin to consume this eating disorder content, they get more and more depressed and it actually makes them use the app more. And so they end up in this feedback cycle where they hate their bodies more and more. Facebook's own research says it is not just that Instagram is dangerous for teenagers, that it harms teenagers. It's that it is distinctly worse than other forms of social media. Every other regulatory body, I mean, we, we, there were, I think, half a dozen cases of this side effect with the vaccine, and there were months and months of further examinations. This is... 13.5% of teen girls who say this product that you guys don't regulate makes thoughts of suicide worse, and 17% of teenage girls say this product makes eating disorders worse. Why is it still up and running? I don't understand why this threat that we all know about is allowed to just carry on doing the harm that it does. Help me understand that. It needs to be regulated, and, and as the father of a, a two-year-old uh, little princess, uh, I, I do fear that if we don't get this right, it, that number is going to go dramatically up. And it's very hard for parents to keep their kids away uh, from social media once, you know, this uh, effect of everyone else around them is on it and on the platforms, then you put your kid in the position where they're alienated. But if you allow them to go into, you know, the, the shark tank, so to speak, uh, then you could have the effect of what was just described in that interview. So we have to get this right. We have what I'm so encouraged by, Nicole, is that in the 2018 midterms, where we flipped the House, we elected 29 new members of Congress in their 40s and under. So we have a body yeah. now, and that's just on the Democratic side, who understands how these algorithms work, who are parents of young children and understand the effects of social media. So it's really on us, I think, as the next generation in Congress uh, to step up and lead. Uh, as we see the harmful effects. Could you see a scenario, Congressman, where Facebook and other platforms are treated like big tobacco with big warnings, more regulation, other measures? 
Well, I, I see a scenario where, again, have a digital convention, have regular reporting requirements, have better awareness to the parents and the consumers. So yes, uh, more warnings about the risks uh, if you do follow these algorithms or if you do not opt out of a lot of what you are automatically opted into. Uh, so yes, I, I think more transparency and more information uh, is always better. Uh, but right now we're in the midst of a pandemic where 700,000 Americans have died and the misinformation across these platforms is only making it worse. I would also like to see leaders condemn the hate speech, condemn the misinformation. And every second that Kevin McCarthy is quiet and doesn't condemn it, he gives the posters on these platforms a permissive operating environment. So it's on all of us to condemn hate speech and disinformation, not just on the platforms themselves.